Hi, this is Manos Brilakis, and this is case 133 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of saphenous vein graft perforation. The patient was an elderly gentleman that presented with non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. He was on warfarin with an INR of 2.2. As a result, radial access was obtained to perform urgent coronary angiography. There was a bypass graft marker that facilitated engagement of the bypass grafts, and then using an AL1 catheter, which is the preferred catheter for left-sided vein grafts, we found that the culprit lesion was a lesion in the saphenous vein graft with the obtuse marginal branch. Performing angiography and PCI in previous coronary bypass graft patients has several particular points that have to do with planning, for example, knowing the anatomy before the procedure in terms of access. Femoral access may facilitate craft engagement, but it can be achieved pretty well through radial access, especially left radial. Using the right catheters for engagement, AL1 for left-sided graft, as in our case, determining the target lesion, which was the SVG lesion to the obtuse marginal branch. And then when it comes to wiring, ideally protection device should be used followed by stenting and imaging to optimize the result. So in this case, we did use a 6 friends AL1 guide catheter. We did use a 3.5 to 5.5 filter wire since we had a long enough distal landing zone. And then we performed um, an angiogram after insertion of the filter to ensure we did not have any embolization because sometimes just crossing the vein graft lesion with the embolic protection device may result in distal embolization. We then performed intravascular ultrasound through the saphenous vein graft, showing that there was soft plaque with a reference diameter of approximately uh, 3.5 to 4.0 millimeters. This is the proximal and the distal segment. The diameter was about 4 millimeters. We placed a 4.0 by 26 millimeter drug eluting stent, which does appear to be a little oversized when compared with the proximal and the distal portion of the saphenous vein graft. And angiogram that was done immediately after did show a saphenous vein graft perforation. What to do when perforation occurs? The first step, as with every perforation, is to inflate a balloon to occlude the vessel. If the stent balloon is still there, the stent balloon can be used, otherwise another balloon can be advanced. Then fluids are given, pericardiosynthesis can be done. However, here, the bleeding is not into the pericardium, but into the mediastinum, so pericardiosynthesis would not help. And then sometimes notifying the surgeons although emergent bypass is very infrequent in patients with previous bypass. Then if there is persistent extravasation of blood through the exit point, the cause is treated when it comes to large vessel perforation, which was the type of perforation in our case. The most common treatment was with covered stent. If there is continued extravasation, equipment is removed, followed by anticoagulation reversal, and very rarely patients may need to go to urgent cardiac surgery. In our case, we reinflated the stent balloon that prevented further bleeding into the mediastinum. And then we decided to use the ping pong guy technique to deliver a covered stent. We obtained femoral access, which had challenges because of significant electrochuosity and um, a previous uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm repair. But eventually, we were able to go to the ascending aorta with an eight friends AL1 guide. Always like to have big guides when uh, trying to treat complications. Allows more support and also allows for um, use of multiple equipment through the same guide catheter. So we backed off the original guide catheter and then used the new eight friends AL1 guide catheter to advance uh, a guide wire just proximal to the inflated balloon. We then deflated the balloon briefly, giving just enough time for the second guide wire to advance distal into the vessel. Note that here we have the embolic protection device and the new wire seems to be going straight into the filter, something that will become important to consider later on. Soon after inserting another balloon through the new guide wire, and then we inflated that new balloon, continuing the sealing of the perforation and preventing bleeding into the mediastinum. 
So our plan here was to first remove the filter wire and then insert to retrieve the filter wire we took the filter wire retrieval catheter and we tried to unfortunately we had significant difficulty advancing it through the previously placed end. In cases like this what can be done is to use the bent tip retrieval catheter that has a small bend at the tip as the name implies which um, in this case we did not do but instead we decided since the vessel was large to just put the filter to pull the filter through and then retrieve it that way Although, again, this has the risk of filter entrapment within the previously placed end. Unfortunately, what happened is that the undergrade wire, the wire from the femoral guide and the wire and the filter wire became intertwined. And it took a lot of force to finally remove them. And when they were removed, they were fairly damaged. We can see how the filter is completely damaged. And the other wire was also completely damaged as well. So what happened? My uh, understanding is that what happened is that the filter essentially captured the other wire. So when, when we're trying to retrieve the filter, that actually retrieved also the other wire and made the two guides become uh, interlocked. Fortunately, we were able to separate them. And then uh, we went back with the femoral 8 friends guide catheter and delivered a 3.5 papyrus uh, cover stand. The stand is now proximal to the blocking balloon. And then after delivering the cover stand, we did have a good sealing of the perforation with good flow through the saphenous vein graft. And Ivus did so a nice result with good stand expansion and strand strut apposition. So several lessons from this case. The first one is that saphenous vein graft perforation can lead to mediastinal hematoma. Second, that for vein grafts, it may be best to actually slightly undersize the stents to minimize the risk of uh, perforation. Actually, there are retrospective studies showing that the risk of restenosis is not higher necessarily if one uses slightly undersized stents. And then what was unique about this case was that the perforation happened over a filter wire. And uh, the challenge was here that we tried to remove the filter wire. And what that did is it caught a body wire we were using through the second guide catheter. So the lesson is we should have either tried to deliver the cover stand over the filter wire without retrieval, or if we were keen on retrieving it, we should have removed the body wire prior to retrieving the filter wire. Thank you.